Welcome back to TarHeelIllustrated.com. And if you're watching on our YouTube channel, Tar Heel Illustrated, I'm THI staff writer Jacob Turner. And joining me from Miami, Florida, our very own publisher, Andrew Jones. Andrew, and you just saw Carolina lose to fifth ranked Texas AM in the Orange Bowl 41 to 27. I know it's a little late. You got plenty of work to do. So let's just dive right into it as we always do. AJ Carolina struggled with that run game tonight. I think it's something that we expected with, with when you consider that Michael Carter and Javante Williams, two of Carolina's best rushers, arguably two of the best rushers in college football, both opted out for the game. Texas A&M finished with 225 yards on the ground. UNC had just 90. British Brooks with 53 of those, and Josh Henderson with 15. Sam Howell also pitched in with 25 yards. So wasn't the greatest night on the ground for the Tar Heels. And, and when you look at those stats, I think Mac Brown said a similar thing. When you look at those two stats side by side, that kind of tells you all you need to know about how this one ended up finishing. Well, it usually does that, especially when in a game, in a game where neither quarterback like explodes. You guys were yeah. 400 yeah. something yards. <clears throat> and that didn't happen. I'd say I'm through 234 and three touchdowns. I think that they drive where not having Javante, especially really kind of showed itself was, uh, Carolina's first scoring drive was 7 0 AM. and Tar Heels ended up getting a field goal, but they had plays of 17, 14, and 13 yards. Got mm-hmm. inside the 10, and then they had three of their next five play, plays, they had lost yardage. One was a sack on Sam, but British Brooks had a run play, he lost yardage. They ran mm-hmm. Sam conventionally, he lost yardage. And that was a spot where you really would love to have the kind of diversity that Michael yeah. and Javante would have given them, especially Javante. And, and, and I, you know, in the end, maybe it didn't matter, but I think that that kind of made the offense a little bit more conservative for a while and a half. I do think that they were just trying to feel things out, see if they get enough of a run game going where they could hit on some deep stuff. It took a while before they were able to do that. Mm-hmm. And I think that that drive was kind of telling. But, you know, I don't want to beat into the ground that those guys weren't here. And I think probably that was the only sequence tonight in which it was very obvious that they weren't. Um, would they have had a huge game rushing? We don't know. They didn't against Notre Dame. I mean, mm-hmm. Car- when Carolina got its final possession with like a minute and a half left, they had 300 yards. They had 298 against Notre Dame. And they had mm-hmm. those guys. So mm-hmm. we don't know what would have happened. But that was one position where it was clearly obvious. Uh, British Brooks, you know, kudos to him for giving great effort. He got 53 yards. He, he's a grinder in there. Just isn't those guys. And it's clear that Josh Henderson's not those guys. And the mm-hmm. fact they had to run Sam conventionally, uh, so uh, more than they would like is it was kind of illustrated what they were missing there. You know, they spent a day Monday trying to devise something because yeah. after Javante yeah. said he was going to, wasn't going to play. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it was they devised, but um, there's not really a whole lot you can do when your Jimmy's and Joe's aren't at the level that they were before and exactly. need to be a team like a and yeah, I was about to say, especially when you consider who, who Carolina played tonight, the number five team in the country. AJ, let's flip to the other side of the ball, talk about the defense for a little bit. We kind of talked about it off camera, but I think it was a game in which Carolina was probably the better team for around three quarters, maybe even a little bit more of that. And the defense had a lot to do with that. Ended up wilting a little bit late and giving up some big touchdowns, which ultimately led to the, to the Texas A&M win. But I thought overall, considering some of those young guys who were in there as well, Eugene Asante, Tony Grimes and those guys across the the defensive line as well. I thought it was a really positive performance for a majority of the game from Carolina defensively. Three three quarters they played big time winning football. Yeah, they had, uh, yeah. After three three quarters A and M had seventeen points and two hundred and fifty three yards of offense. Mm-hmm. That's going to win you games. A and M <laughs> had two three and outs all season on offense. They had five tonight. Carolina made plays. Yeah. Carolina made a lot of plays on defense. They would have made more. There were times Asante would, was there to make the plays, didn't wrap them up. I asked him about mm-hmm. that after the game, and clearly he, he gained confidence knowing he was there to make the play. Now he knows the next eight months, seven months, are about getting stronger uh, and, and, and doing the things he needs to do in the offseason. So next year he makes those plays. So as we talked about before, about not having some of the opted-out players, what they were going to benefit tonight, they know what the running back situation is. They know what the linebacker, they know that Asante can play. And he's going to be a really good player. He now knows, has a whole game of film against the number five team in America of the boxes he must check in the offseason. So next year he makes those plays. Ton of value with that. Tony Grimes came up, made some big plays. They had a big okay. series where Grimes uh, had a PBU and then he had the sack on that blitz. 
and he just looked like a guy who'd been in college for a few years. They, they got him for at least two more years, and he's going to mm-hmm. get so much better because he never had any weight training with the staff. He wasn't he, he so he committed, and boom! Next thing you know, he decided he's going to play. Yeah, he's Imagine playing the next week. Off season, and off season mm-hmm. in this program. I really love what the young guys did. There were there were sequences where Pinder and Hester and some of the other young guys were making plays. You know, whenever A and M got inside the ten yard line, the defensive linemen were young guys because mm-hmm. they're big and they're athletic. They kind of fit the mold of what they want looking forward. So, I, I think that they showed a lot of glimpses and, and kind of from a distance. And trust me, the press box seats here at times, if the plays on the end of the field, you are a distance away. Mm-hmm. Wearing those throwbacks. There was a play here and a play there where they kind of reminded you of those 96 and 97 defenses with the mm-hmm. sideline to sideline speed and four and five hats on the ball. Um, didn't happen enough, obviously. And they did wilt down in, this, in the fourth quarter. Jeremiah Gemmel said that, you know, when Spiller went out, you thought, wow, this is a plus for Carolina. But then this freshman, uh, Shane, comes in and they went to an eye formation. They weren't pre- prepared for that, for anything other than goal line stuff. And I think the physicality of that really got to the Tar Heels. So they got it all on film, man. They know what it takes defensively to take that next step. They saw it all tonight, both the good and the bad. And I think they'll go into the offseason using this as a, as a means to build. Yeah, definitely a springboard, a lot of positives to take uh, from majority of Carolina's performance on the defensive side of the ball tonight. AJ, last thing I want to talk about, you know, you can you kind of look back and not just solely focusing on this game, kind of look back over the last month or so for the Tar Heels. They played three top 10 teams, one on that very field behind you, ended up, you know, playing number 10 Miami and just running them out of the building. Then they play Notre Dame. They also played Notre Dame, who, you know, Carolina was in that game for a majority of that one as well. Very similar to what we saw tonight against Texas A&M. So, you kind of mentioned it a few minutes ago, but they've got it on film. They played those top 10 opponents. They know what they need to do to not only beat those teams, but compete with some of the best teams in the country as well. So, yeah, I think the future is definitely bright for this program going into uh, 2021. A lot of teams in a one-game situation against a big-time club can rise mm-hmm. up and look pretty good and kind of fool themselves. Yeah. Carolina had three examples the last four times they've taken the field. Mm-hmm. They were Notre Dame needed a touchdown with a minute left to kind of salt that game away. Carolina annihilated Miami here, and they led 27-20 with uh, what, 11 minutes left in the game. Yeah. And then it was 27-27 for a while. I mean, under, at under five minutes, it was a tie game, and the A&M fans mm-hmm. were nervous. So <laughs> Carolina proved in three of their last four games, all of which were against these top 10 teams, that the Tar Heels have what it takes to be in those games. Now they need to take the next step, and it, it, they need a couple more guys here, a couple more guys there. Uh, I think that they need a little bit more depth. It's not just high-end guys, but they need mm-hmm. pretty high-end guys behind them. So when they're subbing in the first half and they're subbing in the third quarter, there's not much of a drop-off. And um, I, and I think they now really understand. Max says, you know, we don't want to rent in that neighborhood. We want to buy. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, sometimes you got to, if you go get your real estate agent, you check out a bunch of different neighborhoods and you tour a bunch of houses and you kind of get a feel for it. And, and you go back a few times before you really finalize, you know, okay, this is where I want to live. Well, they had a chance here in the last five weeks. They know where they want to yeah. live. They know that they're not that far away. So they kind of got to save up a little bit more. They mm-hmm. got to get a little bit better credit. And next thing you know, they're going to have an opportunity to have a house in that neighborhood. I think they're on that way. Mac even said after the game, that, you know, I think we're going to be really good. Mm -hmm. We're on the way to being really good. And I don't think there's any BS there at all. I think this program is absolutely heading in the right direction. So many young guys making plays out there tonight. Josh Downs. Remember we were told in August, Josh Downs is going to make plays. He's going to get on the field. Didn't see him a lot. I asked Daz about him tonight. Daz, like, he's like me. And he looked like Daz out there tonight with especially that 75-yarder. You know, mm-hmm. he kept talking about Eugene Asante in August, and we didn't really get a chance to see a whole lot of them. I mean, we saw that speed. We saw the Surratt okay. kind of speed, lateral speed that he had tonight. So there's so much for them to build off of. This offensive line's going to be back. Mm-hmm. Sam's going to be back. Sam tied the career touchdown passing mark already tonight. Uh, he's got a 68 <laughs> tie with Darian Durant. 25 games. Yeah. 25 games, he's already got. He's already tied wild, the record. Man. He'll set it in their second possession next year, whoever they play mm-hmm. in the Open. Mm-hmm. So I think this program is in excellent shape. And, you know, with four guys out, everybody thought they were going to get blown out. I thought they were going to lose by a couple of touchdowns. I thought there was a chance that this thing 
would fall apart and they would get run out. Yeah, the final margin was 41-27, but people that watch this game know that Carolina was a lot more competitive than that. It was a tie game inside of five minutes. And I think when you think about it, most people before the game, if, they, if you told them, Carolina fans, that is, if you could be tied inside of five minutes, would you take it? Yeah, you don't don't worry about what happens after that. Would you take that? Would that be a success? Mm-hmm. I think all of them would have said yes. So that was the success tonight. These last uh, three of these last four games against top 10 teams, I think they acquitted themselves well. And even though they're eight and four, I think that the eight and four looks better now than it did before this game. I, I do think things are headed in the right direction and we're seeing big boy football emerging in Chapel Hill. Yeah, tonight's performance was, you know, any indication of, of what the future looks like for this North Carolina program. That it's, it's a pretty bright one, and Carolina fans should be very excited about it. But, yeah, Carolina losing tonight in the Orange Bowl down in Miami, 41-27 to to fifth-ranked Texas A&M. AJ, I'm going to let you run, man. I know we still got plenty of work to do tonight before we wrap this thing up. So, thanks for joining to, me, man. I have a flight to catch in four hours. <laughs> hey, so you're not getting any sleep tonight, are you? Oh, no, I'm just going to – I'm going to go back to my hotel room, work a little bit, go to the airport, and finish working. Hey, man, we'll save travels back, AJ. And as always, guys, if you've enjoyed this video, be sure to like it. Be sure to subscribe to our channel. Be sure to share this video. We'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks. Thanks.